and welcome everyone. This is Minu at Anglolink. In today's lesson, we're going to look at the verb to have. As you know, the verb to have has many different meanings. It's a main verb, with the main meaning being possession, but it also replaces other verbs like to drink, to eat, and to take. It's also an auxiliary verb, which is used to formulate all the perfect tenses. If you add the word to to it, have to indicates an external obligation. And finally, we have the causative have, to have something done. So today we're going to look at all these different meanings and by the end of the lesson, you will have a clear idea of how to use have in each of these contexts. So when you're ready, we can begin. Right then, the verb to have. As I mentioned earlier, to have has several meanings. As a main verb, its main meaning is to possess. If we add the word to to it, have to indicates an external obligation. It also replaces other main verbs such as eat, drink and take. Then we have the causative have which is causing an action to take place. And finally, it is also an auxiliary to formulate a perfect tense. So let's start with the first meaning, to possess. Make sure that in this meaning, as a main verb, you use the full form, not the contracted form. For example, I have a car. She has three children. We have an idea. He had a cold. Note that you can add the word got without changing the meaning. But be careful that if you add got, it is better to use the contraction. For example, I have a car or I've got a car. Okay, let's look at the second meaning. Have to. To indicate an external obligation. Once again, it's the main verb, so use the full form, not the contracted form. Let's look at the examples. You have to complete this form. He has to resign. We have to stop at a red light. She had to work last weekend. Note that once again, you can add the word got without changing the meaning. And if you add got, it's better to use the contraction. For example, you can say, he's got to resign, and it's exactly the same as, he has to resign. Okay, moving on to the third meaning. Have replaces other verbs, such as eat, drink, and take. Once again, it is the main verb, so use the full form and not the contracted form. For example, we had dinner early. She has a cup of tea every morning. Let's have a break. Have a seat, please. Note that in this meaning you cannot add the word got. Add got only when the meaning is possession or obligation. Okay, let's look at the causative have now. The causative have also is the main verb and therefore you must use the full form. There are two possibilities. It can be active or passive. In the active sense, you say to have someone do something. In the passive construction, it is 
to have something done. Let's look at some examples. Active. I have the garage. Service my car once a year. Let's remove the garage, the actor, and change it into the passive form. I have my car serviced once a year. Another example in the active form. He had a gardener cut the grass last week. Let's change it to the passive form. He had the grass cut last week. And one final example. I will have my assistant send you a copy. Changing it to the passive form, we will get I will have a copy sent to you. Note that you cannot add the word got in this context, but you can use the verb to get instead of to have to express the same idea. For example, instead of I will have my assistant send you a copy, you can say I will get my assistant to send you a copy. Notice that after get, we use the infinitive with to. And in the passive form, I will have a copy sent to you or I will get a copy sent to you. Right then, let's move on to the verb to have as an auxiliary for a perfect tense. In this case, use the contracted form in spoken English and the full form in written English. Let's look at the examples. We've started. It's arrived. I've been waiting for a long time. They'd seen it before. One particular point you have to be careful of is how to make negatives and questions in the present and past simple tenses. When to have is the main verb, used in its full form, treat it as any other main verb and use do, does and did to formulate a negative or a question. For example, I have a car. Negative. I don't have a car. Question. Do I have a car? Next example. He has to resign. Negative. He doesn't have to resign. And question. Does he have to resign? We had dinner early. We didn't have dinner early. Did we have dinner early? And one final example. He had the grass cut. He didn't have the grass cut. Did he have the grass cut? However, when to have is followed by got or is the auxiliary of a perfect tense, then use direct negative and question forms. For example, we've got to complete this form. Negative. We haven't got to complete this form. And question. Have we got to complete this form? Another example, she's got three children. Negative, she hasn't got three children. And question, has she got three children? And now an example in the perfect tense, they'd seen it before. They hadn't seen it before. Had they seen it before? Well, that's all for this lesson. I hope you've enjoyed it. 
Let us know in the comments section below if you found it useful and also what other topics you would like us to cover for you in our next videos. And as you know, you can go to our website, anglolink.com, for further help with improving your English. Thank you for watching. I look forward to seeing you in our next video. Bye now.